praise the Lord, Pastor Steve Sterling. Uh, it's just a beautiful day today here in Dallas, Texas, and uh, we thank God for you that are signed up and uh, have made yourself friends here on Facebook or uh, added us uh, on uh, YouTube, and uh, we thank God for all of the different uh, formats that we publicate from LinkedIn and Twitter and uh YouTube, Facebook, all these, all these uh, animated places. And so we just thank God today. I'm just coming at you. I've got some things I want to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about angels so much because they've been on my mind and in my heart. And uh, I put out some videos already concerning their context with prosperity. And I'm going to continue to do so today and pull out some major points uh, in, in Jesus' name, harmonize and blend it all together and, and sew it all together, weave it all together in our human experience so that we can uh, be fortified and uh, elevated and lifted and uh, bona fide blessings, not only to ourselves but to other people. And so we just pull in every facet and phase aspect level of uh, interaction with angels as God has created them to work for us and to help govern our lives. Yes, help govern our lives, and I love it, don't you? Um, I mean, just like it says in Psalm 103, verse 20, Praise the Lord, ye his angels, ye mighty ones who do his bidding. See? who obey his word. There it is, obey his word, the context of his word, the veracity of his word, the uh, the plan of his word, the precepts of his word, the different uh, components of his word, every facet of his word, every phase of his word. Uh, the mighty one who do, the mighty one who do his bidding or, or work his will and who obey his word. Uh, it says in verse 21, praise the Lord, all, all his heavenly host, ye his servants who do his will. Hallelujah. And uh, that will exercises its domain, its dominion. And so a angels help us to bring dominion forward. There's a psalm, uh, same Psalm 103, verse 22, praise the Lord, all his works and everywhere in all his dominion. Uh, praise the Lord of my soul. So there it is. So. It, it causes the soul to click into 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So we have soul prosperity, you know, and that's why everything clicks in to be, to be able to uh, praise and uh, lift up and elevate God's mighty name. But and I'm going to get right along with that thought in a minute, but I was praying over my body, and I do almost every day. I uh, want to say that, uh, spent some time uh, celebrating and uh, praying over my body. And um, with uh, great heartiness, we pray every day over our temple because we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So um, we pray over a lot of aspects of the body. We pray over all the organs, all the cells. We, we pray over all of the systems, the circulatory system, the digestive system, the endocrine system, the immune system, the uh, exocrine system, the mu ma muscular system, muscular system, the nervous system, the, the renal system, the urinary system, and all the systems of the body. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, there are just over 10 systems in the human body. And so we just pray over all those in Jesus' name. And I pray God healing, health, wellness, and wholeness and soundness will be yours today as well. Since we're talking about 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things, I may just prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So let's get back to where we were uh, before we kind of just uh, made a side note there. You see, since angels are constantly obeying God's word with their strength, force, and power, and their giftings and abilities, uh, and they are, of course, helpers of ours. Of course, it says that in, in Hebrews, I think it's one fourteen. it talks about it. And um, we want to um, at least read it 
Hebrews 1.14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to them who shall be the heirs of salvation? Therefore, uh, Hebrews uh, 1.14, the New Living Translation, Therefore angels are only servant spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. So there it is. So they're sent with us in that format, with that assignment assignment to serve to bring us into our the full volume and the full uh, measure and uh, all the top tier levels of our salvation as as God sings it and brings it but he says something very interesting in Proverbs 28 9 he says whosoever turns his ear from hearing the law or the word of God even his prayer is detestable see uh, angels cannot work very well at all with people that don't pray God's word, don't listen to God's word, hear his word, and then utter his word or pray his word. Whosoever turns his ear away from hearing the word or the law, even his prayer is detestable. So these people who just pray without the word don't really know what they're doing. They need to be more specific. And they need to uh, give the food... Uh, or they give the uh, essence, or they give the uh, tonality, or give the uh, 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 work symmetry, you know, work in parallel lines with angels in order for people to be prosperous and blessed and anointed and delivered and victorious and saved and all those major things. We have to w work in allegiance and alliance with alliance with the servants of God, angels, as we are workers together, serving and praising and glorifying his name. Uh, and that even goes into the area of, uh, of seed time and harvest, of working out of the provisional plan of God's prosperity in our lives. And, uh, you know, working uh, what we have taught already in so many of different lessons, but uh, specifically, you know, as we flow into um, Second Corinthians, um, I think it's nine verse ten, um, as it's written, "He hath scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, and his righteousness endureth forever." There it is. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your store of seed and will increase the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way to be generous on every occasion so that through us your giving will produce thanksgiving to god so there it is um, he not only supplies it but in the idea of angels ministering to us um, you've got to read the king james bible in this particular context in Second Corinthians 9 and verse 10 in the King James Version. Now, uh, let's see if I can read. It says, Now he that ministereth seed to the sower and both ministereth bread for food, multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So there's ministry that comes from God. Ministry, ministering seed to the sower, uh, ministereth bread for your food, and ministereth your seed sown, uh, multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So multiply your seed sown, so you give the harvest. And so that's the idea of ministry. We just talked about how angels uh, have come to help uh, to minister uh, to us. So there it is again, to serve us. So those both work tandem, hand in hand, as, as we allow the angels of God to work in us, work with us, and work through us in God's word. But <clears throat> those who do not uh, walk in the uh, understanding of the word uh, that the word brings and uh, flow in a concourse and parallel lines with angels and know these types of things. Well, uh, Psalm twenty-one twenty-seven says, For the Lord hates it when wicked people offer him sacrifices, especially if they do it from evil motive. Especially as they do it from evil motive. So if you're not in it, uh, God's prescribed uh, uh, purpose in, 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 in prosper, pros, prospering us, if you're not in it for kingdom's sake to, to, to bring in the harvest, because Jesus said the harvest is ready, it's white, 
and, and it's rich for the gleaning, you know. So it's there for us, and we need to be harvesting souls. And so this is all about souls and reaching the ends of the world with the, the word of God. Uh, but the wicked are not so. They're self-seeking, self-serving, and they're consuming all that they get on themselves. And then in, in moving towards God in false motives, they don't have an inkling or an idea or even a, a thought of or any compassion for souls. In Psalm twenty one twenty seven. the Lord hates it when the wicked people offer him sacrifices, especially if they do do it from evil motives. That's Psalm twenty one twenty seven. Uh, you know, and a lot of people, when they come before God, they don't have any idea of re they don't have any revelation. They don't have any unction. They don't have any anointing. And when they go to sow seeds, they do it mindlessly, mindlessly. And I, I was reading the scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse one. And as you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. See, in other words, listen for what God is trying to say. Stop trying to chatter and trying to tell God what to do and, and how much to give and how much to sow. See, as you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless, look at this, mindless offerings to God. Evil to make mindless offerings to God. There it is. See, God wants his protocol to be productive and uh, purposeful and getting into the provision of prosperity that he has prescribed. I think there's all peace in that statement. And of course, um, God make, he makes great overtures to, to us, toward us. And, you know, we bind Satan, the devil, serpent, dragon. We bind all of his evil forces and courses and sources and all of his uh, disadvantaged throng, uh, all of these that come to block, stop, and crop us and drop us we just bind him up right now from the get-go in jesus name and we're well aware that god has uh commanders in his army amen and commanders that control forces of his regimes and uh his regiments and so we lose these commandeering forces over our finance and over our well-being and over our livelihood and we declare right now that you know that St. Corinthians 8 9 works marvelously and wonderfully on our behalf because it's aligned with um, God's uh, commandeering all of his commanders and all the forces and all the generation of platoons and uh, the vision of uh, armed forces out there working for us you know in 2 Corinthians 8 9 for you know the great great grace grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become the rich. The rich. We are the rich. And that is a for sure thing. So Joshua 5.15 says, The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place wherein you are standing is holy. The place that you are standing is holy. So we call that uh, created, sanctified place that has been commandeered by God's angels, God's workers, God's warriors, amen, uh, works on our behalf and for our financial uh, fidelity and for our financial livelihood and for our financial um, outflow. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. So we declare it as a holy place. We receive uh, money, lots of money, lots of resources, lots of abundance, lots of stuff, lots of things, everything new with which we have to do. And we declare that the rich, um, the rich isn't something foreign or uh, something far out, which is something that we are. You know, uh, Proverbs 10, 22, it says, uh, uh, this is Solomon talking here. It says the li verse twenty one. It says the lips of the righteous feed many, but the fools, but fools die for lack of judgment. <laughs> People can't make the right of judgments when they don't uh, flow in God's word. Uh, the blessing of the Lord 
uh, enriches. Look at that. The blessing of the Lord enriches. Another translation, it says, uh, 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 blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. It maketh rich, and it adds no sorrow to it. Yes. No sorrow. There are no sorrow attachments, no negative attachments, no believing attachments, no uh, defiant attachments, no um, uh, least attachments of foreign uh, uh, protocol attached to our finance. Yes, and this, with this we have the uh, thought of the scripture right now that is found in uh, Genesis 26, 13, and he became richer and richer until he was exceedingly wealthy. He became richer and richer until he was exceedingly wealthy. Of course, we're talking about Isaac's prosperity here. Amen. It says in verse 14, he owned so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. That means the world envied him. How many of us walk in that level, in that realm, in that genre, walk in that flow where the world envies us because of the blessing that God has put on us? You know, uh, like it says in Proverbs, Proverbs 10, 22, I'm not which, don't know which translation, but it says the blessing of the Lord enriches, enriches, and he adds no sorrow to it. Uh, it says of Jacob in Genesis 30, verse uh, 43, thus Jacob became exceedingly, exceedingly prosperous. And then Isaac, when he was in famine, you know, that was spoken over him in verse 13, after God gave him a hundredfold in famine. Then it says after that, it says he reaped a hundredfold, so he was sowing. Isaac sowed in the land in famine. In that very year, he reaped a hundredfold. So, sowing when it doesn't look like anything's going to be growing. Sowing when it looks like you're at a dead end. Sowing when it looks like you're in a desert place. Sowing when it looks like that uh, you don't know what end is up and you don't know what to do. But, you know, God has, has been working with you and you stay with him in view. And then he gives you the cue and then you sow your seed right then, no matter what. No matter what, proving God. In verse 13, he became, after that, they said, the Lord blessed him. After he re reaped a hundredfold, the Lord blessed him. And then, verse 13, he became richer and richer until he was exceedingly wealthy. And verse 14, he owned so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. Uh, here it is. No, oh, we've got to love it. You just have to love it. Jesus name you have to just revel in it and rejoice in it you know Psalm 112 verse 3 says wealth and riches shall be in his house talking about the righteous wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness there it is endureth forever there it is wealth and riches hallelujah Genesis 24 35 and the Lord had blessed my master greatly and he's become very great he has flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. See, it's just so remarkably uh, grandiose. So, so it's just uh, so rich, so glorious, so magnificent. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just give God the praise for all of that right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, angels, for working with us and just uh, sowing and growing all of that. So the angels have, have quarantined us, have, have uh, set us in a place uh, to be receiving from him, allowing angels to work with us concurrently as we work with God's word and are being led by his divine spirit who's taking us into the full measure of our inheritance, the Holy Spirit is, until the redemption of our physical body becomes a glorified body. So all that is happening in a swash of God's, uh, of God's life in our lives, you know. Uh, and, you know, the, the angel that went before Moses, we've talked about this before in Exodus 20, 
3.20, behold, I'm sending an angel before you to protect you along the way, along the way. So God puts us in the way, protects us along the way, and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. See, bring you to the place that I have prepared. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, it's, a, it's our journey that they walk with us on our journey. Um, in Genesis 24 or 40, again, and he told me, the Lord before whom I have walked, will send his angel with you, with you, with you, with you. Make your journey a success. Your journey, your journey, your journey. So he's with you. He's helping you make your journey a success or to prosper your journey so that you may take a wife. It says, for my son, from my it's kindred, and from my son's house. So it's my uh, love. There it is. You know, and again, I, I can't reiterate Exodus 20, uh, 32, 34. Now go and lead the people to this place. I told you, but behold, my angels shall go before you, and on that day that I settle accounts, I will punish them for their sins. And so the angel brings us into the conquest. Uh, he brings us into the Canaan conquest. He brings us into Beulah land, mother land, uh, uh, everlasting land, land that we flow with eternal uh, riches and wealth and uh, overflow and abundance, uh, you know. Um, and so along the bumpy way, the angel of his presence, Isaiah 63, 9, goes right along with us. The angel of his presence saved them in their distresses. He too was afflicted he, in his love and compassion. He redeemed them, lifted them up, and carried them all the days of old. So the angels are right there on the march with us, uh, working with us, and uh, carrying through life with us. And, uh, you know, they're doing what they do to help us get what God wants us to have. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Yes, Lord. And so we know that, uh, well, angels bring uh, communication from God so many times. You can read Luke 1, uh, 11 to 9, Acts eight twenty six, Acts 10, 3 to 8, and verse 22, 27, 23 and to 24. You read all of that. Uh, but uh, God brings special messages from treasury angels, treasured angels, prosperity angels, to us, to assist us in uh, moving in the nuances of God's word concerning abundance, wealth, and riches in our material inheritance rights on this planet. So expect messages from on high. Amen. Expect angels to actually uh, reinforce those messages and uh, underwrite those messages and underscore those messages in our lives concerning payout and concerning the uh, population of uh, uh, prosperity resources so that we can move into God's conquest of preaching the gospel throughout the whole world and reaching the end time harvest and gleaning the souls that are out there and leading him into the riches and the fullness and the vastness and the uh, inexhaustibleness, the eternalness of God's uh, salvation, of which prosperity is one of the main hubs. Uh, yes. And I declare to you that there's a river of fire flowing. Uh, and uh, concoursing with angels. Matter of fact, they're called... Uh, winds and fire in the Bible. Uh, God calls them winds and fire. So they work with a fire anointing, uh, the jealous anointing, a jealous fire anointing, a fire that a clar a, a clarification and rectification, uh, recti uh, 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 rectifying things uh, the, 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 in, in re-engineering and recalibrating and to uh, bringing in the uh, uh, changes that are necessary uh, for us to uh, move in sequence and in rhythm and in uh, momentum and in tandem with God's word and how it flows and how it goes. They're, they're, they are powerful angels. Uh, uh, bring the transmutation of, of, of things in alignment with how God is working. You know, in Daniel 7.10, a river of fire was flowing, coming out from his presence. Thousands upon thousands attended him, and myriads upon myriads stood before him. The court was uh, convened, and the books were open. See, God's adjudicating in the fire for us uh, with concourses of uh, 
angel attendants, myriads of angels, thousands upon thousands attending him, myriads upon myriads standing before him, and God's holding court over our money, court over our future, court over our life supply, court over our life uh, fiduciary, uh, life inheritance, uh, uh, life heritage. They're working in a, in a courtroom adjudicating and bringing us through uh, and letting us concourse with the word and with the Holy Spirit and with his holy jealous fire the angels are uh, working, adjudicating helping to assist in uh, defending our position and uh, uh, enlarging our position and uh, giving us a strategic stand for everything that is good in this life that comes from God you know, and so we can pray in Matthew six ten, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And believe me, in heaven you see a lot of angels. You know, in the Old Testament, I think angels were mentioned a hundred times or so. Then the New Testament one sixty five, but a lot of those accounts were in the Book of Revelation, where you know the Apostle John was in heavenly places, seeing angels all over the place. So as it is in heaven, so let it be on the earth. You know. Hallelujah. Um, so I declare in Jesus' name, God's bringing forth infinity wealth to us in every conceivable and possible way. Hallelujah. And he's making a way where there seemeth to be no way. He's opened up doors that no man, no created thing can close. And he's opened up, he's closing doors that no created thing can open. Uh, so uh, I really believe that the, the force, the magnitude, the momentum, the surge of God's power is so unbelievably miraculous. Uh, uh, the flames of which are stirred by holy angels uh, will bring us into abundance like we've never known before and wealth transfer like we've never received before. You know, as I look at Isaiah 66 15 for behold the Lord will come with fire see the Lord will come with fire his chariots are like the whirlwind to execute his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire see God God is working furiously in a windstorm cyclone tidal wave earthquake tsunami you know you name it it's come up with that kind of strategic force to execute his anger with fury and Excuse me, every book uh, with flames of fire. So his anger, fury, rebuke are removing anything and everything that would try to uh, uh, rescind or resist or try to tamper with or try to mess with the majesty of God's uh, monumentous money or resources and supply that he is downloading right now to us in his jealous fire. Angels are concoursing in those avenues right now and always. And we pray in Jesus' name that our wise eyes will be open. Our wise eyes will be open to see the victory that we have so that anything that has had warfare attached to it, anything that's had uh, opposition attached to it, anything that has had uh, stand still attached to it or try to uh, block, crop, or stop our, uh, you know, headship and authority and dominion in this world to expand and increase and, and be abundant uh, is being uh, denied by God through his horse, horses and chariots of fire. Second Kings 6, 17, Elijah prayed, O Lord, please open the eyes, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. The, the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah, all around him, all around him, all around him, all around him, horses of fire, chariots of fire. See, there are more with us than, than there are with them. I know that there's all kinds of tricks, ploys, plots, plans, methods, modes, and means, and traps 
at the world and the system and uh, people out there that, that operate uh, in, in one foot in the world, one foot in the church, operate with and they're withholding and trying to withstand what's rightfully God's. But these, these chariots of fire and horses of fire burning up all of those uh, purposes and all of those agendas and all of those assignments are being blown up, burn up right now, and they're being mauled over by those uh, chariot wheels. And God is bringing us what is rightfully ours in the name of Jesus. That's, those are angels working. Can you see that? And there's not just a few of them. You know, uh, God's putting it all in shape and form and is creating, again, that holy place just like uh, we talked about earlier where that angels uh, set up that place. We talked about the commander and how that uh, he told Joshua to take off his shoes, the place where he stands is holy ground, you know, and there's so many angels you know, working. Psalm 68, 17, the chariots of God are 20,000 and even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. That's Psalm 68, 17. And again, following that theme, uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 33, 2, he said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned upon us from Seir and shone from Mount Paran. Mount Paran is the mountain of blessing, okay? He shone forth from Mount Paran and came with myriads of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. See, the God's right hand speaks of his mighty agency of force and power and initiative. Uh, his his, his right hand is, is an aggressive uh, force that uh, goes in and subdues and uh, knocks out the enemy's uh, platforms, knock, knocks out all the enemy's assignments, and uh, knocks out all the enemy's allegations and uh, infiltrations in Jesus' name in our lives. Hallelujah. So come, come, come. Lord, come from Sinai, dawn upon us from Seir, and he's shown from the Mount Paran. Come with your uh, myriads of holy ones. See, holy ones, holy ones, holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. See, God's making a way where there seemeth to be no way, clearing out space. Yeah, he's put us in, a, he's positioned us to receive uh, the wealth transfer. And now we call forth all these angels from the presence of God to live in the presence of God, know the mind of God, work with the heart of God, work with the spirit of God, work with heaven. We call them to bring the presence of God into our lives and expand our uh, experience with the presence of God. Luke one nineteen. I am Gabriel who stand in the presence of God. Luke one nineteen. I am Gabriel who stand in the presence of God. I am Gabriel who stand in the presence of God. You angels who stand in the presence of God, come and bring a greater expansion in our God awareness and presence in you now and in the completed works of Christ. When Jesus said, it is finished, amen. Hebrews says, there reigneth yet a rest for the children of God. Amen. So we believe in Jesus' name that we're working out a greater measure, greater measure, greater covenant, greater promises. Hallelujah. So that power, that purpose, that presence, those, those initiatives, those progressions are all working with us uh, synchronistically as we flow and go and God shows himself alive with many infallible proofs in our what we call limited finite realm he's catching us in and out of this into uh, his wavelengths and in, into uh, his algorithms into his dynamic flood and flow uh, the way God moves the way God operates the way God lives who God is and his character and all of that name and nature of him is we are peace and part of it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we call these archangels, archangels to come and uh, speak with, with a loud voice uh, and, and make it loud so we could never doubt it. Uh, that which you have for us from heaven. Uh, Th Thessalonians 4.16, it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. It shall call, uh, the trumpet call of God, excuse me, and the dead in Christ will rise first. We call anything dead, anything that is uh, uh, meager, just a little bit, just barely making it, just overbroke, just not enough. 
uh, you know, the voice of the archangel, let it speak with its its com- uh, commanding power that has been given it to us from the Lord. Uh, trumpet, call forth. Let us rise up from the deadness of that which we experience into the life, fullness of life that God has called for us. In Jesus, at the first, the way he designed it, the way he put it together, the way that he brought it about. Thank you, Jesus. You know, uh, we just call angels who specialize in war, especially with a dragon, the false prophet, the beast, the antichrist. We, pray, we call them to come and aid us now in America, in the White House, in our personal houses, in our personal finances, in our personal wealth and enrichment our personal uh, uh, kingdom resources so that we can uh, work out a kingdom conquest and reach everybody in the world with the gospel because uh, it takes money to underwrite the gospel and to send the gospel out, right? He said, now there are war. There, there, now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought against them, but they were defeated. See, we call forth Michael, his angels, uh, those that are fit and those that are formatted and those that are free and anointed by God to uh, destroy the dragon. You know what I mean? The beast, the antichrist, the false prophet, to knock him down, break him down, shut him down, and to let, you know, God's arrangements in our uh, livelihood prevail. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, um, they're chief princes. We just execute and we uh, we speak. Uh, uh, chief princes to come and help us break the strongholds that are set up against our finances and our money. Chief princes, you know, Daniel ten thirteen. But the prince of the kingdoms of Persia withstood me one in 20 days but lo michael even one of the chief princes the chief princes came to help me and i remained there with the kings of persia so we break the power of containment confinement these strongholds that have crimped and stopped and crammed and tried to jam up our money and our resources and our flow for kingdom uh matthew six thirty three, seek you first the kingdom of god is righteous all these things shall be added so the, that have they've hindered all these things being added. Uh, we break it. We just call forth the mighty princes, mighty chief princes, to come under the jurisdiction of our uh, well-being and livelihood, our um, solvency in life, uh, to come and fight and battle and bring the victory. Oh, I feel that in the name of Jesus, my God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And, you know, nobody knows this. Not very few people know this, but there's always holy, 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 and holy being sung over the earth. The thought of holy, holy, holy is being proclaimed, whether people would even hear it or even receive it or even acknowledge it. And I'm telling you, it's going on in heaven, and the angels are doing it. And it's uh, causing wealth transfer because a lot of people are rebellious, they're obstinate, they're hard-hearted, they're indifferent. Uh, they don't have any uh, recourse to serve God, to love God, to do things God's in prescribed way uh, uh, of his provisional plan of prosperity, of seed time and harvest, and those types of things. But see, um, look what it says, regardless of what people think. In, in Ezekiel 5, uh, and uh, uh, Ezekiel 1, uh, verse 5 to 14, and Revelation 4, 6 to 8. Let me just read two excerpts around his all-powerful eternal dominion, or his throne. There appeared a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle, representing the various parts of God's creation, wild beasts, domestic animals, human beings, and birds. Day and night, they never ceased to sing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Was and is and is to come. Past, present, and future. They're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You see, and then God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 17. It says that the, the Lord Almighty you know, appeared to him. 
and said, walk before me and be perfect. Be perfect. The Lord God Almighty. Past, present, and future. He's got it all covered. The angels are singing it right now and bringing it right now. Oh, and they're proclaiming it over all of the entities of the earth. Yeah. These are mighty creatures that stand before God and declare his mightiness forever. Hallelujah. His powerful eternal dominion, his authority. It all revolves around his throne in front of his son, past, present, and future. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It just makes you just, uh, wow, it just blows your mind, doesn't it? You know, let me read that also again from uh, Revelation 4. Um, and those, these are, these are uh, four living creatures. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like an ox, the third was a man, and the fourth like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings, uh, was covered with eyes all around, under, even under its wings, day and night. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, who was and is and is to come. See, these are, they're, they're declaring it globally around all of God's works. There's an invisible stream flowing, whether people will admit it or not. It's being declared, umpired, and it is being trumpeted by God globally. I'm telling you. That's why it behooves us to stay in God's word, to stay under the anointing, to stay under the mantle, to stay in the fire, to stay in the glory. See, it, it behooves us to do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, this fiery seraphims in heaven. Uh, don't live, you know, uh, counter of the of the fiery seraphims and their confession in heaven because they're they're there day and night, night and day, and they're declaring. These are types of angels, but they're called seraphim. They're fiery uh, serpents, so to speak. Fiery serpents. That's what it means. Seraphim. Um, in Isaiah six two to seven, uh, it says they were uh, continually worshiping the Lord, saying, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts." The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The earth is full. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know, and, and God's word, talking about glory, God's word is declaring it every day as well. You got to love it in uh, Haggai, uh, the second chapter, verse 8. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of his, of his house will be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of angel, Lord of angel armies. You see, he's making this work through the militia and through the uh, marshalling and through the uh, soldiering of his angelic forces. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The, the latter house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. So it is again in this place I will provide peace and provide uh, Prosperity declares the Lord of hosts. See, there it is. There it is. It's just, uh, it's remarkable, isn't it? It's astounding. It's just beyond anything that we've ever known before. You know, Isaiah 66, 12, this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river, the wealth of the nations like a flowing stream. The wealth of the nations like a flowing stream will nurse it. It will be nursed and carried on her arm and bounced upon her knees. You know, Hag Haggai 1.8, go up into the hills and bring down the lumber and build the house of the Lord so that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, and that's where he talks about, you know, the, the former glory, uh, nothing compared to the latter glory or the greater glory. So it's, see the flow there? It's remarkable. Thank you, Jesus. And again, and just to point out, I think I've got to close here, but, and just to point out that God himself sits between cherubims, Okay. Uh, he, he's right there at the atonement cover in the holies of holies. He, he's at the atonement cover. He sits between two cherubims, 
seated on the covenant law or word that he commands. See, this is all grouped together. In Exodus 25, 22, they're above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the cover, over the ark of the covenant law. Two cherubim that are over the ark of the covenant law. I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. I'll meet you and give you my commands. There it is. God's vote of voice, God's commanding voice, God's authoritative verse is working for us uh, through his jealous, the fi jealous fire of his word and through the uh, atonement blood that's on the lid in the holies of holies. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And he's the God of the whole earth. He's the God of the whole earth. In Exodus twenty five twenty two, if you read that, it, it, it exclaims Exodus twenty five twenty two there above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the coming of law. I will meet with you and give you all my commands for Israel. You know you Psalm verse eighty. And verse 1 says for the, uh, uh, let me read it here. It says, uh, Here is a shepherd of Israel who leads Joseph like a flock. You who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Rally your mighty power and come and save us. Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, you know. You know, the double portion power of, of Joseph just come in a mighty way and just... Uh, bring prosperity in every conceivable way to us uh, hallelujah and that's what he you know again that in Exodus 25 22 just bring it all together thank you Jesus and first Samuel 4 4 it says the people sent men to Shiloh and they brought back the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts who sits at throne between the cherubim see there it is and the two sons of Eli and Hopney and Phineas were there with the ark of the covenant of God. Of course, it's the ark of the covenant of God. See, he sits between the two cherubims. We sit between the two cherubs. You see what I mean? These protective covers are ours. You know, the commanding vote of voice of God is ours. You know, and Eli and Hopney and Phineas are disarmed. The false priesthood is disarmed before the ark of the covenant of Almighty God. Because the angels are working furiously, feverishly on our behalf. You know, Psalm 23, 1. Actually, um, well, yeah, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, Psalm 28, 9. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them forever. See, shepherd and carry them. Angels are working right with us. He's the God of covenant. We've already talked about it. He's enthroned between the cherubim. The God of the whole earth. There it is. The Ark of the Covenant, say. You know, Psalm 70, 7, 15, you, with power you redeemed your people and the sons of Jacob. With power you redeemed your people. The sons of Jacob and Joseph. Look at that, Jacob and Joseph. Wow. Psalm 50, verse 2, from Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. You know, um, with power you redeemed your people. What kind of power? Uh, I think Deuteronomy 8.18 type of power. And it says um, in verse 18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to give wealth and to confirm his covenant. There it is, to confirm his covenant. There it is, to confirm his covenant, which you swear to your ancestors. What do we preach to the world when we get to them? 
with this message of salvation we preach covenant with God covenant with God that's what we preach good news there's a covenant that's ratified between God Almighty and uh, Abraham through his seed Christ and so the connection of God Almighty and Christ uh, and the Melchizedek order priesthood uh, endless life priesthood without beginning or without end coming in and ratifying all the good things and galvanizing them in our personal lives to orchestrate, facilitate, operate, and pontificate God's abundant eternal provision in Jesus' name. Well, that's it for now. Pastor Steve Sterling, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to sow a seed right now, just go to Cash App and put in S S R I P R O C K S S S is in Sam S S Sam Sam uh, Rip Rock R I P R O C K and then also um, you can download Zelle on your smartphone if you haven't done already and then put four six nine three three five three three five six in it four six nine three three five three three five six see what's this going to do this is going to activate orchestrate this is going to spread this is going to fuel this is going to literally uh, bring winds and fire and glory and power and pomp and pageantry and blessing it's just going to literally uh, be a driver like a driving force for you now as you seed into what we've just said and sown to you. Uh, and then if you want to, you can go ahead and send it to the P.O. Box, uh, Dallas Revival Center, 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227. 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227. Enter... Uh, if you make checks and money orders, enter U-A-W-O-M-I, U-A-W-O-M-I. All right. Bye-bye for now. God bless and God's best. Talk to you real soon.